Sunrise on the James. You're looking at Belle Isle from the other side of the river today. I promised you we were going to be coming over here and taking a little closer look at Hollywood Cemetery. So Hollywood Cemetery is kind of like a garden cemetery. It's a nationally registered arboretum and it's kind of laid out similar to how a city park would be laid out. So when this place was originally created, it was created in mind of having a place to bury your dead with, uh, also a place to have fellowship. Um, they used to have picnics here, festivals. It's really, really amazing place that I'm bringing you to today. It's one of my favorite spots in the city. It was created in 1847, started being built in 1849. The gentleman bought the property off of the Harvey family for $4,000 and a few conditions. One of the conditions being that their family cemetery remain on the land and have perpetual care. So $4,000, that's a really small sum. Um, I know that some of these plots, just a regular plot, cost up to $15,000 each now. So it's a pretty good deal for the guys that bought this place. So here you're going to see a lot of rolling hills. You're going to see a lot of the local fauna here, as well as a few very, very special trees to the area. They have a cypress, a white poplar, and a black gum. I'm going to try to show them all to you. So much to see in here, you could spend days in here. And now today you get to spend one day with me. So I have a few places already lined up for you. And then we have a little time for some organic discovery together. I'm telling you, I've been in here a million times. And every time I come, I see something different. So guys, come along for this one. You're going to enjoy it. Okay, and we'll start this right at sunrise. Like I said, we're in the Oregon Hill neighborhood. We're going to go in, check out Hollywood Cemetery. Show you from the front gates. This is the old caretaker's house. I hear it was built out of a catalog. So back in the day, you used to be able to order your houses out of a catalog and they'd come disassembled. And you'd have somebody put it together. I absolutely love that house. You got your Hollywood Cemetery sign. States are open 8 to 5 daily. I'm here right at 7 a.m. So you can get in a little early. And you can walk through here. You can take your bicycle. I've ridden my motorcycle through here plenty of times. Show you a little view of what that kind of looks like. It's a very fun little ride through here. You got your old chapel. It used to be the chapel where they would do all the service and the interments. Um, now it's the office. Show you this chapel. Y'all are in for a real treat. This is what we call a garden cemetery. You have your old gates over here. Hill, everyone. Historic neighborhood in Richmond. All right, so we're going to make our way into the cemetery. Got a few different things to show you. Very, very beautiful, stunning tombstones, mausoleums. Just come along for the ride. Check it out. You have your old gates over here. Oregon Hill, everyone. Historic neighborhood in Richmond. All right, so we're gonna make our way into the cemetery. Got a few different things to show you. Very, very beautiful, stunning tombstones, mausoleums. Just come along for the ride, check it out. 
So here you'll see the map to Hollywood Cemetery. The blue line is a drivable tour. Um, Stepped you off at a bunch of different famous spots. Don't know how well you can see this. But we have a couple of presidents we're going to visit today. We've got six governors here. Also some other notables. A lot of generals of the Confederate Army. As well as prize winning authors. Yeah. Let's do it. Coming into the cemetery now. As you can see, you can see a lot of rolling hills. This is a nationally registered arboretum. See a lot of rolling hills, a lot of trees. They have a nice cypress tree on here, a black gum. Um, three, four hundred year old trees. I think you're gonna like it. W.W. Pool grave right over there. More on that later. Looks like we're going to have a interment over here today. So you're still able to be buried here even up to this day. They got lots, niches, you can have urn burial, you can have your ashes scattered on the grounds. Um, they have a new area as well as they also have spaces available in their older area which we are coming into right now. So like I said here's the blue line. When you come in on by car, by bike, by foot, as long as you follow this blue line you'll always be able to find the most popular spots inside of the cemetery. driving up on those gorgeous views that I started you off with again I'm telling you you just cannot beat these views going to take us to our first little stop on the tour. We're going to park right up here, a couple of little interesting spots to show you, and we'll get right back with you. You're going to see a lot of different types of memorial markers here. You're going to see anything from the traditional headstone to the obelisk to the cross to the even more funkier, um, unique kind of burial tombstones. But this is another option you have. This is a wall where you're able to have your remains placed, whether that be an urn or a casket. This is the Palmer Chapel Mausoleum. So this is in memory of Holcomb Palmer. He used to be the president of Hollywood Cemetery, 18, sorry about that, 1980 to 1998. You're gonna see nice stained glass got the wrought iron gates I'm telling you now I'm in love with wrought iron more on that later so like I said they still have a few spaces available and I mean who wouldn't want to be buried in one of the most historic cemeteries not only in Virginia in the country so the Palmer Chapel comes out to a nice view of the river we have the train tracks here. It used to be the lifeline of Richmond. Showed you the triple crossing yesterday. Yeah, awesome.
So, Ginter Avenue. Home to Louis Ginter. New York born, Richmond raised philanthropist. He was into a lot of things, the tobacco trade. This is his mausoleum. If you're from Richmond, I'm sure that you've heard of the Lewis Ginter Botanical Gardens. One and the same. So if you see these windows, I don't know if I can get a very good view from the outside. These are all Tiffany glass windows. These are very expensive windows. They've recently had them restored within the last few years due to vandalism and destruction. And like I said, this is a park that's meant to be relaxing. So just kind of organically found this little spot. In the summertime, the shade would be good here. But as you can see, we have a few inlaid graves. And you got your little bench here. This family would have installed this bench for their loved ones to come and just congregate and pay their respects. So now we pay ours. And that's what it's all about being in a cemetery, y'all, especially one like this that's meant for traffic. It's just be respectful. Um, can't say that enough. Just respect where you're at. currently on a search for a grave that is unlisted here. I do a lot of find a grave work. Um, I will volunteer to take pictures of headstones to discover lots of people that might be out of the state, out of the country that want to make sure that their loved ones' grave sites are being taken care of. Um, really enjoy doing that. Coming up on this side, of the cemetery. You see an adjoining cemetery. This one is Riverview. Once we get up here, it'll break off to the left hand side. Like I said, right across that fence line is Riverview. So we made our way over here to the President's Circle. I have a couple of presidents buried in here. James Madison, the fifth president, as well as John Tyler, the tenth president. Both were native to Virginia. Let's check it out. So this is one of the more expensive pieces of real estate in the cemetery, the President's Circle. Because who doesn't want to be buried next to one of our nation's founding fathers? take a little walk through here I'm gonna check a few things out I might have a story or two to tell this was recently restored this is James Madison's tomb this is called the bird cage so if you would have came here three or four years ago you would have seen that the bird cage was a little bit in disrepair the iron rot was showing its age sorry the rot iron was showing its age and They've recently done a full restoration on this piece and it is magnificent. So James Madison has his wife buried here as well. There's his tomb. And there's his casket.
Okay, and right over here, a little more unassuming, but no less impressive, is John Tyler's final resting place. Interesting fact, John Tyler's grandson is still alive, as far as I know. Um, last year I read an article on it in the Richmond Times-Dispatch, and it stated that he was the oldest president that still had a grandson living in this time. Pretty amazing. But yeah, that's John Tyler. He's got the presidential eagle up on top of the obelisk. Like I mentioned, some of his other family is born here, is buried here. Lion Gardner Tyler. These are what we call a cradle grave. You'll see these around the cemetery a lot and it's always sad when you see them because you know that a little baby went in there. We have General Joseph Anderson. More Anderson clans. So I can show you a little better example of these cradle graves. Like I said, these are just sad. Some of them you see will have a little bowl, a little water bowl. And that in a nutshell is the President's Circle. Nice views of the river. Um, like I said, one of the more expensive places to be buried in here. They still have some floor markers available. I'm not sure if they have any plots. But you can always be cremated and be eternalized on this sidewalk. Check out this elaborate wrought iron fencing. I'm a fan. So I told you I was gonna check on a few things and I'm glad to see that it's cleaned up a little bit, but Hollywood Cemetery a few years ago had a very, very serious issue of vandalism to where the presidential circle was damaged extensively. Just off the top of my head, I believe it was about $300,000 worth of damage that somebody did. And actually, there is still a little proof here. So like I was saying about just coming to a place like this, being respectful. I don't know what ever draws somebody to do something like this. But whoever you are, you got some serious problems. And we'd appreciate it if you'd stay out of our beautiful cemetery. <laughs> Hello, gorgeous. They who lie here rest in peace. I hope they do. And Confederate Circle. So this is the final resting place of the one and only President of the Confederacy, Jefferson Davis. His wife was also buried here. Verina Winnie Davis. Anyone local to the scene knows that Verina is one of the counties around here named after her. His son is also buried here. And his son died at around the age of six from falling from the second floor of the White House of the Confederacy. So a lot of generals a lot of Confederates are buried in here. One of the more notable ones and to the Robert E. Lee fame is Fitzhugh Lee. He is one of the six governors of Virginia buried here at Hollywood Cemetery and nephew of Robert E. Lee. Got another little angel statue over here. 
her hand is missing as well. Sad. This is the Confederate section. So they have this 90 foot tall pyramid. It was dedicated in 1869 to all the soldiers that lost their life in the war. It is a true pyramid in that it is stacked rock and it has a very interesting story on how the capstone was placed. So apparently the capstone was a major issue in getting up there. Um, they brainstormed a bunch of different ideas on how to get the capstone up there and eventually by story a prisoner at the local jail came up with the idea of scaling the pyramid himself and laying the capstone. Um, I don't know the exact weight of the capstone. I believe it was a couple of hundred pounds, so I found that story to be a little hard to believe that a gentleman could have scaled the wall, scaled the pyramid, and placed the capstone. But apparently that task and him completing that gained him his freedom. So there it is. There you are, erected by the Hollywood Memorial Association, 1869. I wanted to show you all of Hollywood Cemetery. I know that the Confederacy is a little bit of a touchy subject, but it's all history when it comes to the cemetery and I want to show you every side of it. So again, these markers represent about 10% of the actual people buried here in this section of the cemetery. And you'll see them grouped in different things such as the Gettysburg dead. So all these people were lost in the war at Gettysburg. And over here, this is the Virginia dead from Arlington. I mentioned before I do a lot of find a grave work that's brought me into this cemetery and trying to find a few different markers over in this area as well. I think the most interesting one I've found so far and kind of lost place of where it is at the moment, but there was a 16 year old gentleman that lost his life. He was from Virginia and he had made it all the way up to staff sergeant by the age of 16. So I've looked through a lot of these different profiles looking for tombstones. I was volunteering and I've seen 50 year old privates, 30 year old privates, and somehow this kid was able to make staff sergeant at the age of 16. So over here we have George Pickett's tomb. George Pickett is famous for the Pickett's Charge. In where a lot of his soldiers were lost in a major frontal assault at Gettysburg. Fire in the hole! Here's another good little story kind of tied to the Civil War. So you'll see this cradle grave. This cradle grave was the daughter of a Richmond local merchant that passed away. So it said that outside of his shop, he had this dog and the little girl came every day faithfully to come and hang out and pet this dog. So during the Civil War, this is being led, it was a pretty valuable commodity to the war. So the Confederacy wanted to 
melt it down and turn it into bullets. Well, they brought it here, put it as a grave marker, and had it protected to where that wouldn't be able to happen. And of course, there's an urban legend that the dog does come alive at night and guards the cemetery, guards the little girl's grave. Um, I think that's a pretty cool one, pretty feasible. What do you think? Does it come alive at night? Speaking of urban legends, this is the tomb of W.W. Poole. And this is one of my favorite spots in the whole cemetery, y'all. Have you ever heard the story of the Richmond Vampire? I told you we were going to get back to that. So, got a little thing for you here. Let's roll to it. Okay, we're here in Churchill, Virginia. Site of the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad collapse. I'm going to take that down to this Churchill Tunnel. And this tunnel is the birthplace of the Richmond Vampire, W.W. Poole. So W.W. Poole was born in Mississippi, 1842, and he died in Richmond, Virginia, 1922. Or did he? So the story goes that in 1925 this tunnel up here collapsed and when the tunnel collapsed they had a locomotive in there as well as six workers so everybody was trapped inside and one figure managed to make its way out this figure came out and when it did it was mangled and bloody with broken teeth At that time, everybody that was trying to help with the rescue chased the thing off. At that time, legend goes that it fell into the river, went on past the river, and made its way into Hollywood Cemetery. So once it made its way into Hollywood Cemetery, it made its way into W.W. W. Poole's mausoleum. Hence, the birth of the W.W. W. Poole Hollywood Richmond Vampire Legend. So I don't know. Train collapse. They say that a fireman in there, Benjamin Mosby, is the one that made his way out of the tunnel. He was shoveling coal with no shirt on and with the collapse, the boiler blew up and went on ahead and scolded him badly also at the same time breaking out some teeth so that's two different versions of the story richmond urban legend very popular with the vcu kids i hear um it's really fun to think about sometimes it's a bunch of different theories online um, as to even the design of his mausoleum and that's it. W.W. Pool in a nutshell. Whether you believe or not, it's one of Richmond's earliest urban legends. And one that I hope to prove right or wrong one day. Anyway, y'all, back to the cemetery. So what do you think? Are you a believer too? If you come here, you'll see that it definitely has a Masonic, Egyptian type vibe to it. Um, older style in-ground tomb heard that they have moved unfortunately the bodies of W.W. Poole his wife and his daughter due to concerns over vandalism and theft of the bodies um, I normally would go through the gate and show you a little closer but I think I'm gonna be a little bit more respectful today and not go there so that's the Richmond vampire y'all
Here's that gorgeous white poplar I was telling you about. We got a special little treat up here for y'all. Alright y'all, and unfortunately that's our Hollywood tour over. I hope you enjoyed seeing this fine place as much as I enjoyed showing it to you. Like I said, it's one of those hidden gems that's only a half a mile from my backyard. And I really enjoy coming up here and spending a lot of time. Um, plan on spending a lot more time too. As you can see behind me, this is plot number 87, which I have gone on ahead and purchased for me and my loved ones. So I figured I'd close out this video and show you where I'll be closing out my life because death comes for every man. So let's show it to you. This is in the older section of the cemetery. We have the nice granite stone work. Like I said, I'm in love with wrought iron. One day soon, these will be redone. I've been told they'll be refinished and looking brand new. So there already is a couple of burials in here. We have the Peters Reed family. They take up this one, this one, and this one. There's also an unmarked one over there. I have purchased these two plots here, um, and this will be my eternal resting place. Pretty macabre, but I think I want it to be the first travel vlogger to ever close out from the eternal home that he's gonna have. So this will be my final vacation place, y'all. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed this tour. Um, episode two of the Home Richmond series, about three weeks until I travel again. I really appreciate everybody's support so far in this little journey I'm trying to do. This is only the beginning, um, and yeah, come along for it, y'all. I really appreciate the help. All right, till next time. Thanks. Take it easy.